Many companies are starting to invest in driverless cars because they are quickly changing from a thing of the future to a thing of the present. One of the most important parts of designing a driverless car is a braking system that will prevent crashes in case of emergency. However, there are many complications that make designing the braking system more difficult. The braking system must be quick enough to avoid collisions yet slow enough that the passengers inside are not injured from suddenly stopping from a high speed. Imagine you're driving down the road and an animal jumps in front of your car. An automated braking system will have a faster reaction time than you will, therefore saving your life and your vehicle, as well as the animal. The goal of our group was to create a braking system that could stop quickly enough before a hazard, yet slowly enough that the passengers inside the vehicle would not be injured. In order to solve this problem, we simplified the entire system so that there were three variables, the initial speed of the vehicle, the mass of the car, and the coefficient of drag of the vehicle itself. In this, we only controlled the braking force that would change the stopping speed of the car. The reference vehicle chosen by our group was the 2004 Taurus SE. It was chosen because it was extremely popular in the United States, and because of this, there are many specifications and performance statistics available online. In addition, the car is quite average as a car in terms of its performance. Using the 2000 Ford Taurus SE, we were able to get a reasonable performance reference for our system. The original input speed is estimated to be about 26.82 meters per second or 60 miles per hour. At the speed, a Ford Taurus is able to slow to 0 meters per second in 1.6 seconds. A Ford Taurus which should cover 43 meters during this braking time, and as such, we want our system to reflect that at 1.6 seconds to slow down and 43 meters traveled. Our system was modeled as seen in the image and contains a damper, a mass, and a braking force. The damper represents the drag the car experience, the mass represents the car itself, and the braking force represents the force from the applied braking. Using our simplified model, we are able to derive a transfer function using the initial velocity of 60 miles per hour or 26.82 meters per second. The transfer function as shown results in a function of velocity in terms of time of 26.82 times Euler's number raised to the power of the drag coefficient times time divided by the mass. Several parameters were chosen for the system to be modeled. A mass of 3,780 pounds or 1,714.58 kilograms was selected based on the generic mass of a 2,000 Ford Taurus. Once again, the initial velocity was selected to be 26.82 meters per second or about 60 miles per hour. And this was once again based on a Ford Taurus and a reasonable highway speed. A damping of 5,000 newton seconds per meter was selected because a higher damping would yield a quicker response, which is necessary when applied to a vehicular setting. As seen on the plots on the next slide, a low damping, which was estimated to be one newton second per meter, would extend the required braking time to well over five minutes. This is not acceptable in a vehicular setting as this would likely lead to a collision. While a high damping, roughly 5,000, resulted in an adequate time to slow to a stop somewhere within the range of one to three seconds. The plot on the right shows the step response for the braking system. The speed of the car reduces quickly for the first half second, then tapers off to an asymptotic speed of zero. Ideally, this speed would be zero, realistically, as the car must come to a complete stop. The step response looks inverted compared to other systems because the braking force is in the opposite direction Rather than speeding the car up, it is slowing the car down. The response of the system is sufficiently fast as it only takes about one, one and a half to two seconds for the speed of the car to reach a speed of approximately zero meters per second. To begin the analysis of the system, the bounded input bounded output stability needs to be evaluated. This can be done analyzing a Nyquist plot for the open loop system and using the equation z equals n plus p where n is the number of clockwise turns around negative 1, and p is the number of poles of L of s whose real parts are greater than 0. As can be seen in the Nyquist diagram, the plot never circles negative 1 on the real axis, and thus n equals 0. From the original transfer function, it's also known that there aren't any poles of L of s whose real parts are greater than 0, and thus p also equals 0. So, z will also equal zero, and thus the plant is already vivo stable on its own. This conclusion is also supported when analyzing the Nyquist plot. The point zero zero is located on the Nyquist plot, and so no matter how the gain might change, 
the plot will never expand to the point where it crosses negative one on the real axis. This confirms that the gain margin is infinite. Similarly, when looking at the plot, it can also be seen that no matter how the phase might change, the plot can't rotate enough to where negative one will be crossed. This confirms that the phase margin is also infinite. Now that it's known that the system is stable, the robustness can be evaluated using a Bode plot. As can be seen in the diagram, the phase plot never reaches negative 180 degrees, and thus the gain margin is infinite. Likewise, the magnitude plot never reaches zero, and thus the phase margin is also infinite. This means that no matter how the gain or phase changes, the system will never become unstable. Thus far, all calculations have been made with an input reference speed of 60 miles per hour, or in metric units, 26.82 meters per second. If the initial speed was altered, the response time of the system would also be altered. For example, if the initial speed was lower, the response time would increase since it would take less time for the car to reach a speed of 0 meters per second. During the system's operation, it's fairly likely to be disturbed by outside sources such as an inclined or declined road, an icy surface, or wind. For example, if the car were going uphill, the time for the braking force to result in a velocity of zero would decrease since the gravitational force would add to the braking force. However, these types of disturbances were not found to have a significant impact on the system's performance, especially in average daily driving conditions. A disturbance to the system would need to be extreme in order to be non-negligible to the system's performance. The type of reference input that best suits the model and performance of the system is a unit step input. This is because the input of the braking force will be an immediate and then constant input during the system's performance. To determine a value for our proportional gain controller, a settling time constraint of 1.5 seconds was added to the root locus as shown in the right. Uh, this led to a value for Kp of 0 0.0028, and this led to our open loop system being stable and our specifications being met. The step response of our braking system with proportional control is shown to the right. As you can see, the settling time is 1.34 seconds, and this means that the car will come to a complete stop from 60 miles per hour in 1.34 seconds. Additionally, the rise time is at a value of 0.753 seconds, which would minimize injuries due to deacceleration. A simulation of our system with a 4 second delay is shown to the right. As you can see, the output does not go to positive or negative infinity and is therefore stable. That's it for our presentation. You can find our references below. Thank you for your time and attention.